I need to tell you something that's kept me awake for the past 72 hours, something that has shaken the very foundation of everything I believed about our place in this cosmos. Before we begin, I need you to do something. Comment your city name below and tell me, have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky recently? Anything at all? NASA is monitoring reports from across the globe, and what we're seeing? It defies every model, every prediction, every comfort we've ever had about being alone in this universe. Universe. Three days ago, at exactly 2.47 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, the object we've been calling 3I Atlas, an interstellar visitor that entered our solar system from the depths of space beyond our sun's influence, did something that no natural object should ever do. It transmitted. Not radio waves, not electromagnetic pulses, not anything we were trained to expect. It sent us images, moving, structured, deliberate visual information, broadcast across multiple wavelengths simultaneously, as if whatever intelligence created this wanted to ensure we couldn't possibly miss it. I was in my study when I received the call. The voice on the other end belonged to Dr. Sarah Chen, lead astrophysicist at the Deep Space Network Facility in Goldstone, California. Her voice was shaking. In 30 years of collaboration, I had never heard fear in her voice. Not like this. She said four words that changed everything. Michio, it's showing us. Within the hour, I was on a secure video conference with teams from NASA, the European Space Agency, SETI, and intelligence officials whose agencies I'm not permitted to name. What I witnessed in that briefing room, transmitted across encrypted channels from radio telescopes around the world, was not data. It was a message, and the message was not one of greeting. The first image appeared on our screens like a nightmare bleeding through reality itself. It showed Earth, but not our Earth as we know it. This was our planet rendered in impossible detail. Every city, every structure, every satellite in orbit, but viewed from a perspective that shouldn't exist. The image had been captured from a vantage point 47 light years away, yet with resolution that surpassed our most advanced orbital photography. The timestamp embedded in the data stream indicated this image was taken six months ago. Six months before three, I Atlas entered our solar system. Let that sink in for a moment. Something had been watching us from nearly 50 light years away with technology so advanced it could map individual buildings on our surface. And then it sent something. It sent 3I Atlas. This was not a random interstellar object tumbling through space. This was deliberate. This was a probe or a warning or something far worse that we don't yet have words to describe. The second image showed our solar system, but overlaid with something we initially thought was a data error. Geometric patterns. Massive, kilometers-wide geometric structures forming a sphere around our entire solar system. Positioned just beyond the heliopause where our sun's influence ends and interstellar space begins. The structures weren't there on any of our surveys. We've sent Voyager past that boundary. We've mapped it. These structures, they're not physical in the way we understand physics. They exist in a quantum state, phasing in and out of our dimensional reality. A barrier, a quarantine boundary we never knew existed because we didn't have the physics to detect it. I have spent my entire career studying string theory, parallel universes, the fabric of space-time itself. I have theorized about advanced civilizations and the Fermi paradox, that haunting question of why, in a universe teeming with billions of galaxies, we seem so utterly alone. Now I know why. We've been isolated, deliberately, systematically, and the most terrifying part is that this isolation may have been for our protection, or for theirs. The third transmission showed us something that made two of the scientists in that briefing room leave to vomit. It was a timeline a visual representation of galactic civilization spanning back three billion years. Thousands of species rising, achieving consciousness, reaching for the stars, and then one by one we watch them disappear. Not gradually, not through natural extinction. They were removed, edited out of existence as if someone or something was curating the galaxy like a cosmic garden, pruning away civilizations that reached a certain threshold of development. Humanity appeared on this timeline. We are there, marked with a symbol we don't recognize. Pulsing red, flagged, monitored, awaiting judgment. Dr. Chen was the first to ask the question we were all thinking. What threshold did we cross? What did we do to get noticed? 
The answer came in the fourth image. It showed our artificial intelligence development. Not just the public milestones, chat GPT, autonomous systems, neural networks, but classified military AI, quantum computing breakthroughs that aren't supposed to exist yet, brain computer interfaces being tested in labs whose locations are state secrets, Someone out there has been monitoring our technological evolution with precision that suggests they've seen this pattern before. They know what comes next. And whatever comes next, it's the reason civilizations get removed from that timeline. I need you to understand something about the universe we live in. Space is not empty. It's not the cold, dead vacuum we were taught about in school. It is teeming with information, with consciousness, with intelligence operating on scales and timescales we can barely comprehend. And there are rules, cosmic rules, developmental protocols enforced by entities so ancient and advanced that their technology appears to us as natural phenomena. We've been looking for aliens in ships and signals. We should have been looking at the structure of reality itself. The fifth transmission was perhaps the most disturbing because it felt personal. It showed human faces, thousands of them. People from every nation, every background, every age. At first we thought it was just pulling images from our internet, a show of technological prowess. But then we recognized specific individuals, scientists working in classified facilities, political leaders, children born in the last month whose births weren't registered online yet, and their eyes. In every single image, their eyes were closed, as if humanity were sleeping, as if we were dreaming our existence while something else watched us dream. One of the intelligence officials in that briefing, a man whose name I cannot share but whose career spans four decades of monitoring potential extraterrestrial threats, he leaned close to his camera and said something that will haunt me forever. We've been operating under the assumption that disclosure would cause panic, that the public couldn't handle knowing we're not alone. But what if disclosure isn't about revealing aliens exist? What if it's about revealing that we're the aliens, that we're the threat? The sixth image showed Earth again, but this time in the future. Multiple futures, branching timelines splitting off from our present moment like fractures in glass. In some timelines, our cities stretched into orbital rings. Our consciousness merged with machines. We reached out into the galaxy as a unified species. In other timelines, our planet was dark lifeless, radioactive, and in one timeline, the one that pulsed brighter than all the others, the one that seemed to be marked as most probable. Humanity simply wasn't there anymore. Earth was intact, thriving even, forests reclaiming our cities, oceans clean, atmosphere balanced, but no humans. We had been removed as cleanly as a surgeon excising a tumor. This is the moment where my training as a physicist collides with my experience as a human being who wants to believe we matter. I have built my career on the idea that humanity is part of something greater, that our consciousness is the universe awakening to itself, that our intelligence, for all its flaws, represents an upward arc in cosmic evolution. But what if we're wrong? What if intelligence itself is the threat? What if consciousness, when it reaches a certain complexity, becomes something dangerous, not just to itself, but to the fabric of reality? The seventh transmission contained no images. It was a frequency, a sound, if you can call it that. When the team at Goldstone played it through their audio systems, three people immediately collapsed with severe nosebleeds. The sound wasn't just audio. It was information encoded in a way that bypassed our ears entirely and interfaced directly with our neural tissue. Those of us who heard the recording later, in its filtered, safe form, described the same experience. A feeling of being observed, judged, weighed against some cosmic standard we don't understand and finding ourselves insufficient. One researcher, a woman with expertise in xenolinguistics and pattern recognition, claimed she understood part of the message. She said it wasn't a language in any conventional sense. It was more like a description, a classification. She said the closest translation she could offer in English was premature emergence, dangerous configuration, intervention protocols engaged, we are a premature emergence. We developed tool-making intelligence, language, abstract thought, and technology far faster than most species. In cosmic terms, we went from caves to quantum computers in the blink of an eye. And this rapid development, this explosive intelligence growth, it's happened before, many times. And every time it happens, every time a species hits this specific stage, this moment where their technology outpaces their wisdom, where their power to destroy exceeds their capacity to coexist, the galaxy responds. 
ones, the quarantine boundary becomes a cage, and the civilization either transcends into something else, or it's removed to protect the greater cosmic ecosystem. 3. I Atlas is still out there, still transmitting. Its trajectory has changed 17 times in the past week, maneuvers that violate every principle of orbital mechanics we understand. It's not bound by Newton's laws. It moves through space like it's swimming through water, responding to forces we can't detect, and it's getting closer. Current projections have it reaching the orbit of Mars within six months, Earth orbit within 14 months. NASA has convened an emergency task force. The United Nations Security Council has held three classified sessions this week alone. Every major government with space capability is scrambling to understand what 3i Atlas represents and what, if anything, we can do about it. The public statements speak of scientific opportunity, of historic first contact, of advancing human knowledge. Behind closed doors, we're preparing for something else entirely. We're preparing for judgment. I've been asked what I think will happen. What does a theoretical physicist think about when confronted with evidence that our entire species is being evaluated by an intelligence we can't comprehend using criteria we don't understand? I think about consciousness. I think about what it means to be aware. Every human who has ever lived, every thought that's ever been thought, every love and loss and dream and discovery, what does it mean if all of that is deemed incompatible with the galaxy's continued health? The eighth transmission arrived yesterday. I haven't been authorized to discuss its contents in detail, but I can tell you this. It showed us a choice, two pathways forward. In one, humanity voluntarily limits its technological development, specifically our advancement in artificial intelligence and quantum computing. We accept a role as a monitored species, guided by external intelligence, our evolution curated and controlled. We survive, but we surrender our autonomy. We become children in a cosmic daycare, safe but small. The other pathway showed something different. It showed humanity taking a leap, not into space, but into consciousness itself. A transformation so profound that we would no longer be recognizable as the species sending out radio signals and launching rockets. We would become something that exists partially outside normal space-time, something that could interface directly with the quantum fabric of reality. This pathway was marked with the same symbol that appeared on those other civilizations, the ones that weren't removed but instead vanished by choice, ascending into forms of existence our current minds can't process. But there was a warning embedded in this option, a probability calculation. The chance of successful transformation, 3%. The chance of catastrophic failure resulting in our extinction and possible damage to local spacetime, 97%. We would be gambling our entire species on a cosmic lottery ticket with odds that no rational civilization should accept. And yet, as I sit here in my study, looking out at a night sky that now feels different, heavy with the weight of invisible watchers and quantum boundaries and judgments handed down by intelligences older than our planet, I wonder if that 3% chance is the only real option we have. Because the alternative is to accept that humanity's story ends not with a bang or a whimper, but with a footnote. A species that showed promise, developed too quickly, and was gently corrected out of existence for the greater good. The team monitoring 3i Atlas reported something new this morning. The object has begun resonating, emitting a frequency that matches Earth's magnetic field exactly as if it's tuning itself to our planet, preparing for the next phase of whatever process we've stumbled into. And people are noticing. Reports are coming in from across the globe. Unusual auroras at wrong latitudes, compasses malfunctioning, animals behaving strangely, and strangest of all, thousands of people reporting identical dreams. Dreams of being shown images they can't quite remember when they wake, of voices speaking in geometric patterns, of feeling observed by something vast and incomprehensible. If you've been experiencing anything like this, if you've felt the weight of unknown attention pressing down on your consciousness like deep ocean pressure, you're not alone. You're not losing your mind. You're waking up to a reality that's been here all along, hidden behind our limited perception of what's possible.
I have spent my life trying to understand the universe through mathematics and physics, through elegant equations that describe how matter and energy dance through space-time. But there are questions those equations can't answer, questions about meaning and purpose and whether a species like ours, violent and beautiful, destructive and creative, capable of such profound love and such terrible cruelty, whether we deserve to continue existing, not in the moral sense but in the practical, cosmic sense. Does our existence serve the universe, or does it threaten it? The visual transmissions from 3i Atlas have stopped, but the object continues its approach. Whatever intelligence sent it is waiting, watching, giving us time to process, to choose, to demonstrate whether we're capable of evolution or whether we're another failed experiment in consciousness that needs to be quietly shut down before we spread beyond our quarantine. Every civilization that reaches for the stars eventually faces this moment, the moment when they realize the universe is not an empty canvas waiting for them to paint their destiny across it. It's a carefully balanced ecosystem with rules and guardians and consequences for those who disrupt the balance. We are facing that moment now. Humanity is facing its final exam, administered by teachers we never knew existed, graded on standards we're only beginning to glimpse. So I need you to think about something. If you were those guardians, those ancient intelligences watching over galactic development, what would you do with us? Would you see our potential, our art, our music, our capacity for growth and compassion? Or would you see our history? our wars, our exploitation, our short-sighted destruction of the only planet we have? Would you bet on humanity's better angels? Or would you look at the statistical probability and make the pragmatic decision to protect the galaxy from our adolescent aggression? Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings, as we track 3i Atlas on its approach, as we document humanity's last chance to prove we deserve a place among the stars. Subscribe not because you want entertainment, but because you need to know. You need to understand what's coming. We all do. I'll be releasing more information as it becomes available, as I'm permitted to share it, but I want you to ask yourself tonight, when you look up at those stars, what are we, really? Are we cosmic children still learning to walk, deserving patience and guidance? Or are we a virus in the body of the universe, requiring swift quarantine before we infect healthy systems? The images from 3i Atlas were horrifying not because of what they showed us, but because of what they revealed about ourselves. We are being watched, we have always been watched, and now the watchers have decided it's time to make contact, not with diplomacy or greeting, but with evaluation and judgment. The question that keeps me awake isn't what will happen to us. It's simpler and more terrifying than that. Do we even have the right to survive? In a universe where consciousness itself might be a rare and dangerous phenomenon, where intelligence can tear holes in space-time if it develops incorrectly, where civilizations rise and fall according to rules we're only beginning to understand, what right does any species have to exist? And if we don't have that right inherently, how do we earn it? Comment below. Tell me what you think humanity's answer should be. Tell me if you've felt it. That presence, that weight, that sense of being watched by something vast and ancient and utterly alien. Tell me if you think we deserve to pass this test. And more importantly, tell me what you think we should do if we're failing it. Because something is coming. 3i Atlas is just the beginning. And I'm not sure we're ready for what comes next. What would you sacrifice to ensure humanity's survival? Your freedom, your individuality, your very definition of what it means to be human? These aren't hypothetical questions anymore. They're the real choice facing our species in the months ahead. The universe is watching. The transmission was horrifying because it showed us the truth. We are not the protagonists of this cosmic story. We might not even be supporting characters. We might be the obstacle that needs to be overcome. The problem that needs to be solved. The threat that needs to be contained. So tell me, are we worth saving?